one of the questions which has been popping up in some of my videos more and more frequently in the comments section is how to get a supermodel network set up so that you can play multiplayer on one PC. In the past I previously directed people over to the supermodel forum using a link that they could download to get a test version of the network version themselves and in this network version it did come with a readme file that explained exactly what you needed to do to get it working. Unfortunately now though it's no longer possible to get onto the supermodel forum unless you're a member. This was a change which unfortunately became necessary due to some real life things going on with the main supermodel developer. Now in recent years the process involved in actually getting a network working has been simplified so the information that you used to get in that readme file is now outdated and I haven't actually seen it documented anywhere so I thought I'd put this video together just to explain how you can get this working yourself. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is get hold of a networkable version of the emulator. I'm going to put a link in the video description that you'll be able to download one from. Once you've downloaded it you should end up with a zip file that looks like this. So create yourself a folder to put it in if you've got like a folder you keep all your games in or something like that and unzip it here. Once that's finished unzipping you should end up with another folder that looks like this. Double click on that to go inside and then choose either the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version depending on which version of Windows you're using. I'm using the 64-bit version so I'm going to go for this one. And just to simplify things what I'm going to do is cut this out, put it back in this folder here and then delete the version here that I do not need anymore. What I will do here is rename this to Supermodel Network Player 1 and then we're going to need the second version of this so copy, paste and rename this one to, can you guess what it's going to be? Supermodel Network Player 2 Done so now that we've got our two different versions of the emulator in two different folders, what we need are some games to put in those. So here are some which I've already downloaded. And we've also got something here called batch files, and this is what we're going to use to launch the games with. If you're not familiar with batch files, I'll go into how to use those a little bit later. But first of all, let's put our games in the folders. So what I'm going to do here is cut these, put them into player one, and then we'll copy these and put them into player 2. Now before we actually get the emulators configured to work in a network what we also need to do here is configure the actual games themselves to work in a network once they finish copying across. And it's important that we do this bit first before we actually try and get the emulator network working. So what we'll do is configure player 2 here first and we'll use Scud Race Plus as a test example. So what you need to do at the absolute most basic level to open up a game is to left click on your ROM and drag it over to the Supermodel EXE and then let go. What we want to do now is to get into the game's test menu which you do by pressing down 6 on your keyboard once the ROM is loaded. Sometimes you have to press it a couple of times to actually get it working. There we go and then you use 7 to then actually go through the different selections here. What we want to do is go to game assignments, we press 6 on that to open that bit up, and then we want to change the link ID here. So master is what we want player 1 set as, what we want player 2 set as, oops, didn't mean to do that, right, go back to that, okay, so change with 6, so change that to slave with a 6, use 7 to go down to car number here, We'll use 6 to change that to 2. The cabinet type we just want to leave alone. And then what we want to do here is exit. Exit again and that should save that in our game's end RAM. So we can exit out of this now. So if we go into player 1 here. Again, just getting the Scud Race Plus ROM. Dragging it over to the EXE. What we should find is that this is automatically set. Oh, and I've got to actually allow my firewall to work on this one now. 
You didn't see the firewall option pop up in the Player 2 emulator because I'd quickly tried it out off camera just to remind myself what the test key was and what the key for selecting things was in the test menu. So if you press 6 to get into the test mode. Go down to Game Assignments using 7, press 6 to get in there. So that one is already set to Master and Car Number 1. So the games should now work when we link them up. So it will exit from here with 6, exit from here with 6. Again, that will save that to the game's NRAM. So we can close out of this now. So what we want to do now is to configure both emulators to actually work in the network. What we need to do for this is to get to the Supermodel INI file for each emulator. So we're in the Player 1 folder here. So click on config, go to your Supermodel INI file. We'll open that up here. And what I think will be easiest to do is if we have both INI files open at the same time, so we can see the information in both. The information that we're specifically after is this bit here. What I'm going to do is just close that one down. I'll go into the Player 2 folder now, go to the config file, open that one up, and we'll keep this one on the right hand side of the screen so we know which one's which. Uh, again, let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're after. We'll open the Player 1 one up here. Okie dokie. So, Player 1 is already set up correctly. We've got the information here for the local uh, net loop. Uh, the port in and port out are configured correctly. So what you need to do is to go over to your Player 2 one here. We'll change that 1970 to a 1971. And we'll change the port out here to 1970. So this is the basis of the loop network here. So basically, you've got the port in and port out uh, both communicating with each other there. So if we close that down, save it, and close this one down, and save it, and we should be ready to go now to get the network working. Herpa derpa, no we're not. I was forgetting about one little thing that we need to do, which is one of those new changes that I said about that happens with the network now compared to the test version, and that is we've actually got to set up each emulator to actually put it into network mode. And the way that you do that is by clicking on this bit in your INI file and changing it into a 1. So we need to do that in both of the INI files. Uh, you don't have to have them both open together at the same time like I've got it here. It's just to sort of visually demonstrate what you need to do there. So we can close that, save it, close that, save it. Now we have got it ready for the network mode to work. So the next thing we're going to do is configure our batch files so that we can get two versions of the emulator loading at the same time. So if we come out of here, we'll go into games where I've got some batch files ready made. Let's cut these and we'll pop them into the original folder here. And we'll now configure the batch files to launch both the emulators together. At their most basic, a batch file is simply a text file that contains one or more commands. And you can use them as if you are launching Supermodel Emulator directly from the command prompt. And these commands allow you to control things like whether you want the emulator to start in windowed or full screen mode. Whether you want a frames per second counter to show up when you've got the game in windowed mode. What resolution you want the game to display at and whether you want to use an X-input controller or a D-input controller. At its most absolute basic level, all you need to launch Supermodel from a batch file is the name of the Supermodel application in here, supermodel.exe, and the name of your game exactly as it appears in zip file format with the .zip extension behind it. You're also as well going to need the address of the folder that you've got your games in. Now, I've actually got an incorrect address here because of the fact this was a batch file that I was using to launch the game from somewhere else. So what you'll need to do is put your correct address in. I'll put the information that you need basically to get this working in the description, and then what you'll need to do is put the address in yourself. So all you'll need to do that is to navigate to the folder that you want to open it from. 
so we'll go to the player one here click in your address bar and then just copy that address open it up here and then we just want to paste that between those quotation marks there for emulator number one so we'll just paste there now we know that in my case here I've named the slave emulator or the player 2 one simply as player 2 so I can just repaste that information and we'll just change that to a 2 now we've just ended up with a couple of uh, erroneous plus signs in there which is just for me operating my video capture equipment let's just delete those so they don't fuck everything up now all I need to do to save that because I've already created it as a batch file is to just close it here and it'll give me a prompt to save it as a batch file so we'll save that and we now have that batch file ready to go which will be uh, the scud race plus multi launch one here if you need to make a batch file from scratch what you need to do is open up a new text file then copy and paste that information that I'm going to put in the description which is the basic information to run supermodel and then put between the quotation marks the address to the folder that you're going to put both of your emulators in. I'll also put a link in the description to the Supermodel help page and from that you can have a look yourself at some of the more advanced options you can add into your batch file if you want to change the game's resolution, start it in full screen mode or change the type of game controller device that you're going to use. There are also other options that you can add into your batch files, such as the ability to change the game's music volume, the sound effects volume, your power PC clock frequency which can help improve performance, and also whether you want the game running in widescreen, and also some other sound balancing options as well. You can also use the batch files to activate false feedback in your games if you've got a racing wheel. Anyway, so what you need to do with your batch file is to click on file, is go to save as, so let's just say you call it scud and then you need to put the extension on the end dot bat so we save that and that has now saved that as a batch file now one other thing that I ought to just mention is that in order to actually get a supermodel network working it's very important that you use this command here called no threads Basically what this does is it converts the emulator into single threaded mode So normally when supermodel works it would use all the cores of your CPU So if you've got a you know dual core or a four core It's going to use all those CPU cores to get the best performance Unfortunately with the network mode working it doesn't work for some reason with the multi-core option So you have to put it into this no threads mode which unfortunately does make the game work a bit slower Okay, so having done all that, it's now time for the moment of truth. To operate your batch file, all you need to do is double click on it, and that should launch both versions of the game. Now, what I find the best thing to do here is minimize both of those command prompt windows that come up, minimize that folder, go to the option here on your uh, taskbar that lets you display both of the windows side by side. So here we can see the master and the slave attempting to get the network connected. There we go, it's worked. So there we go, both of them linked up together. Linking up very slowly because of my video capture equipment going on in the background. And there we go. Two versions of Supermodel Emulator running Scud Race Plus in a network mode. Now something that's interesting is although the no threads option does make the emulators run more slowly than if they were able to use all of your computer's CPUs, it's actually the network itself which causes some of the slowdown. Now the video capture software that I'm using is something else which also contributes to the slowdown. So what I'm going to do now is make a little tactical switch to some footage from my mobile phone and then I'm going to launch two versions of Supermodel with the no threads option working but with the network disabled and I'll let you see the difference in speed for yourself here.
So even with the no threads option working there, we can see that both the emulators are running at about 55 frames per second, which is a massive, massive improvement from how it was working with the network, where it was running at about 25 to 30 frames per second. And what's exciting about this is that one of the supermodel developers reckons it should be possible to tweak the network to actually get it running at whatever faster speed your computer can handle with the no threads option enabled. So that would be pretty awesome if we can get some almost full speed multiplayer going at some point soon. Well, almost full speed for me. People with more powerful computers will probably be able to get it at proper full speed. So a couple of last things that are just worth mentioning. The first is if you wanted to get more than two players working in your network, what you need to do is basically increase the way that the network ring works. So in player one here, if we're doing a three player example, you've got your port in is uh, 1970, port out is 1971. For player two, port in is 1971, port out is 1972. And then for player three, you've got port in is 1972, and then port out links back to player one here being 1970. If you wanted to add extra players in, all you do is you just keep adding those in, but just making sure that in the final player, you link it back to the 1970 there. The most I've ever tried myself is six. And with that, I could tell there was some serious slowdown going on with my PC, even on top of the normal slowdown that you get with the game. Most of the networks generally work as an 8-player setup, but Daytona USA 2 can support a whopping 16 players. If anyone's got like an extreme, insanely powerful PC, I would be interested to know if you could get all 16 of those working. So the other thing that's just worth mentioning is if you want to try and get this working as a two-player network across two different PCs, what you'll need to do is alter the information in your INI files. So for your Player 1 INI, what you'll need to do is change this information here to whatever the IP address is of the other computer that you're trying to connect to, and then do the same on this computer for your Player 1. And you can find out what your IP address is by going up to your command prompt here, then typing in ipconfig and hit enter. I'm not actually going to show you what the information that comes up for me is, just in case I'm naively giving away some information that could let some teenage hacking expert remotely access my modem. But basically with the information that comes up on the screen, you need to just scroll up through it until you get to the bit that says IP4 address, and that's the information that you then copy into your INI file. So that is the end of the tutorial now. I hope you found it useful. If you have, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, and if you want to stay tuned in into future content like this, and also be an awesome mega dude or dudette, then don't forget to subscribe. This is Mr Thunderwing signing out, catch you again sometime soon. Ta-ra!